Empty factories, idle machinery, inventory backlog. This is the current state of many foreign trade enterprises in China. Most of these enterprises are in the garment processing and similar industries, but there are also other processing plants. As a result of the CCP's stringent zero COVID policy in the last few months, many enterprises were unable to start work normally, resulting in the cancellation of orders from large apparel companies in Europe and the United States. Now that they've missed the peak holiday shopping season, it's difficult for factory owners to receive new orders, and many factories can only let workers take the Chinese New Year holidays more than a month in advance. There are also factories that have finished processing their products but are unable to ship them due to the epidemic, or some customers simply don't want them anymore. A large number of goods are stacked in the warehouse where there's nowhere to go. The end of the year is the debt repayment period for many factories, and to make up for the workers' wages for the whole year. If factories cannot receive their payments, they can only go bankrupt and close down. This is a labor market crowded with people looking for work. Many factories closed early, but there is still more than a month before the Chinese New Year. As the main source of income for their families, these people still want to earn more money before going home for the New Year. However, few factories are recruiting, and even if they are, the wages are very low. Due to the severe closure policy in the previous months, the factories could not start working normally, and these workers basically had no income for a year. Now, the Chinese government, under various pressures, has suddenly changed the epidemic prevention and control policy and opened everything up. These workers initially thought they would be able to work just like they did in the past. But who would have thought that as the closure policies got removed, work didn't come back? How about the domestic market? According to past trends, the period leading up to the Chinese New Year is peak shopping season, and it should be the best time for major shops to do business. This is the scene of Xu Jiahui Commercial Center in Shanghai on December 10th. Originally, weekends will be the most crowded for these big shopping malls, but now the streets are practically empty. And most shops are still closed. Beijing is also in a depressed state. Many shops are still closed, and the streets are almost deserted. The subway stations, which used to be crowded with people, are also empty, like a ghost town. Almost all the stores along the streets in Guangzhou were still closed, and looks no different than before closures were lifted. The Wanda Shopping Mall in Zhengzhou has not received the expected amount of customers after the closures ended. The entire mall had less customers than the store staff. Like the weather, China's manufacturing industry has also entered a cold winter, and no longer has the prosperity it once had. Many of the formerly successful bosses are now heavily in debt. A young woman in the video said. I failed to start my own business and now owe more than one million yuan. It's the twelfth day since I went bankrupt. Frequent calls, questions from my parents, text messages about repayment, and creditors who come knocking on my door. I don't know how much longer I can live in such a dark life. Another man was holding a bunch of credit cards in his hand and said that all thirty credit cards were overdue and there were four online loans. It's not that I don't want to pay, but I simply can't right now. Please give us debtors some time. I now really can't pay it. I can't pay it. My phone and my phone bills are all overdue. In the three years since the pandemic, the authorities have adopted a zeroing policy, from border closures to frequent area and city blockades. This harsh approach has hit the world's second largest economy very hard. Especially on foreign trade, as official figures show. On December seventh, data released by China's General Administration of Customs show that China's imports and exports both fell sharply in November, by more than experts had previously predicted. Exports fell by 8.7 percent year on year in November, down 0.3 percent compared to October. Imports fell by 10.6 percent. Such a large drop is rare in the past decades. It was also the worst month for China's foreign trade since the outbreak in February of 2020. Experts attribute this to the decline in domestic and external demand, 
the severe impact of the zeroing policy on the supply chain, and the enormous pressure on the economy from China's ongoing general recession in the real estate sector. At the moment, people are experiencing high inflation on a global scale, not seen in decades. Soaring prices for food, heating, transportation, and daily necessities are severely impacting people's spending power, and causing world trade activity to lose momentum. Was a corresponding impact on China's foreign trade companies. According to a December 4th report on CNBC, U.S. manufacturing orders in China are down 40 percent. Supply chain research firm Project 44 told CNBC that U.S. orders in China reached record levels during the pandemic lockdown, but the number of 20-foot standard containment ships from China to the U.S. Has fallen significantly since late summer 2022. Was the total number of container ships falling 21 percent between August and November this year? Reuters pointed out that the actual decline in China's imports and exports greatly exceeded the market's expectations. Economists predict that the decline in exports will continue for some time. Consumers and businesses will reduce spending following the central bank's tightening of monetary policies, and the scale of global trade will see a sharp drop. On the other hand, rising labor costs in China are driving apparel manufacturers to relocate their overseas production lines from China to Southeast Asia. According to media reports, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP, which came into effect in January this year. Aims to create a unified market by reducing tariffs and non-tariff barriers, and suppliers of apparel companies such as Adastria Group, Aoyama Trading, and Uniqlo are moving some of their production lines to Southeast Asia, where wages are lower. They are also taking advantage of tariff reductions on textile imports to reduce production costs. According to the Japan Trade Promotion Agency. The average monthly salary of factory workers in Guangzhou recently rose to about 670 U.S. dollars, nearly 1.5 times higher than in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, and 4.5 times higher than in Dhaka, Bangladesh. In the past, China's cheap and quality labor force attracted a large number of foreign investors to set up factories, and was hailed as the world's factory. Many processes in the garment industry still rely on human labor because of the difficulty in automating sewing work, making labor the largest cost of production outside of raw materials. Because of this, China once dominated the global textile industry. However, the time has passed, and in the near future, China's status as the world factory will be lost, and its market will be shared by other Southeast Asian and even Latin American countries. Other industries are also accelerating their pace of withdrawal from China. Last month's riot by tens of thousands of Foxconn workers has further accelerated the departure of the giant Taiwanese company and Apple's industrial chain from China. According to a December third report in the Wall Street Journal, Apple is letting some of its product lines quickly withdraw from China and has told its suppliers that they should be more active in assembling products elsewhere in Asia. Particularly in India and Vietnam, Apple's long-term goal is said to be to ship 40 to 45 percent of its iPhone shipments from India. As Apple's supply chain shifts to other countries, other supply chains may also leave China. Julian Evans Pritchard, senior China economist at Capital Economics, an independent economic research firm. Said in a report that China's export trade is likely to shrink further in the coming quarters. In response to the growing pressure of a contracting economy, the CCP authorities stressed at a meeting of the Politburo in Beijing on December 6 that the focus for 2023 will be on stabilizing growth, promoting domestic demand, and opening up to the outside world. On December 7th, the CCP officially released 10 new measures to optimize epidemic prevention. Without a clear roadmap, the authorities hastily ended the zeroing policy, causing a surge in cases everywhere. The surge in infections has kept many patients and those who fear infection at home, which could further devastate China's manufacturing sector. Recently, with the relaxation of prevention measures. 
Export provinces such as Guangdong, Zhejiang, and Jiangsu have organized delegations to solicit orders from overseas. According to the Chinese official media Security Times, on December 8th, an order snatching group from Zhejiang, composed of provincial departments such as the Department of Commerce and Enterprise representatives, started a six day trip to Europe. This is the first group led by the Zhejiang Provincial Commerce Department to solicit orders from overseas. Subsequently, Zhejiang will organize more than 10,000 enterprises to participate in economic and trade activities abroad through chartered flights and other modes of transportation. The Department of Commerce of Sichuan Province also organized 31 foreign trade enterprises with a total of 40 people to fly to France, Germany, and Italy for nine days of economic and trade promotion activities. Official media said, according to incomplete statistics, Zhejiang, Sichuan, Guangdong, Jiangsu, and Fujian have government-related departments that have formed teams to go overseas and seek orders. As the economic struggle is becoming a universal concern, it is expected that more provinces and cities will join in the order-grabbing movement and make every effort to stabilize foreign trade. However, industry insiders believe that the CCP's official delegations to Europe and the United States is more for show than for real. In the video, the woman said, the customers of Europe and the US are either on a vacation or preparing for vacation. Who would even talk to you after you go there? Moreover, in previous years, orders were communicated by email. How is it any different this year? Why must it be in person? In addition, the procurement season overseas are concentrated in the annual Spring and Autumn Canton Fair. It's already winter, and any orders have long been placed. Even if there are replacement orders, it's not worth the trip. This man said that he has been in the foreign trade industry for decades, and he is well aware of the situation in December. At this time, the Christmas orders from Europe and America have all ended. They are now making plans for next year. As the Christmas orders are not made, it's impossible for foreign companies to give you orders for next year. Moreover, there is still a lot of uncertainty about whether there will be further closure next year, whether there will be power restrictions in the summer, and unresolved environmental issues. Since there is no guarantee of production, why would any foreign company place an order?